How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to get access to the secret hidden chest below the Skyforge in Whiterun and how to get unlimited gold and rare armor early in the game. And in this video I'm actually going to be showing you three separate methods of how to get below the map in Whiterun and how to access the blacksmith's secret chest. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos and find them useful, please do remember to leave a like and remember to leave a comment on any Skyrim related videos you would like me to make. Anyway, now that's done, let's get into the video and let me show you these three separate methods of how to access the hidden chest. Okay, so for this first method, what you're going to want to do is teleport to Whiterun and this will put you within the main gates of the city. Now, once you're here, you want to turn around and you'll see on the left and right, there are two separate areas you are able to access. Now, you want to go to the one on the left when you are looking at the gate. And here you can see there's this barrel. Now, what you want to do is you actually want to jump on top of the barrel and face north and jump onto the wall. Now, as you can see here, for some reason, it wasn't actually letting me get out, when usually it does. So if this happens to you, don't feel like you need to do one of the other methods, because what you can actually do is hug onto the wall and make your way over to the south side of where the barrel is, and this also allows you to get out of the map. Okay, so I've sped this up here because it does take a minute to get around to where you want to be, but what you want to do is just head to the east side of Whiterun, toward Dragon's Reach, just following this wall around on the left. And as you can see here, we are basically parallel with Dragon's Reach, and there's this big invisible spot on the ground. Now, once you're here, you can just walk over it. And as you can see, we're not falling through a map or anything, you're able just to walk over there, you don't have to jump like other videos say so you do. Now, you may be able to recognise where we are right here, but that's actually the Skyforge that I'm looking at right now. So what you want to do is just head west to the wall, and you don't have to hug right against it like I do right here, just as long as you're generally near the wall you should be okay. Now you want to head south, and as you can see, you can actually go through that rock. I'll go in third person here just to show there's no sort of tomfoolery going on. Um, so yeah, you just want to head here. And as you can see, there you have the hidden chest under the Skyforge. Now what this chest actually contains is the blacksmith's inventory. So you can take anything out of the chest and it doesn't actually count as stealing. So you want to make your way below the grindstone over here because this is how we're going to be able to actually speak to the blacksmith from under the map so when he's over here by the way guys you can actually just wait an hour as long as he is actually working in the forge and as you can see there we waited for the hour and he's now walking over to the grindstone Now, once he's actually sat down, what we're going to be able to do is jump and speak to the blacksmith. Now, this is how we're going to be able to trade with him from under the map. So, just do as I do there. You can jump, reach him fairly easily, and ask him what he's got for sale. Now, from this screen, as you can see, he has some ore, some arrows, some dwarven stuff, some hide stuff. Nothing too amazing, um, but you know, at the start of the game, this is all very useful. Now what I'm actually going to do here is just demonstrate how you are actually able to make a profit on your gold. So as you can see, I have 22,600, so I'm just going to go ahead here and buy something quite expensive. Let's go for this silver armor, cost 1,150, so we're just going to buy that. And I don't actually need the armor, so I'm just going to get rid of it once I've left this screen. Mm -hmm. Now 
Now bear in mind what he had in his inventory. And now what we're going to do is just walk over to his chest. And we can actually take a look inside. Now just like with speaking to a blacksmith, you do have to jump in order to be able to reach it. But as you may recognise, this is exactly what he had in his inventory. And... And there you have it, there is a 1,150 gold that we gave to the blacksmith. So that is how you can make your money back. And that is why it is important to speak to the blacksmith first before you go to the chest. Because if you go to the chest first and then speak to a blacksmith, you will actually have to go back to the chest to get your gold back. Now what you want to do here is actually save your game quickly. Because what we're going to do is actually force a blacksmith to reset his inventory. Now some of you guys may know where I'm going with this, but you want to save your game, and then I usually like to shout because that's obviously going to reach him, and just load the previous save that you just made. Now as you can see we're back in the previous save before I actually did any damage to the blacksmith, and now if I ask him what he's got for sale, you will actually see his inventory has been fully refreshed and stocked with new good items. So just like last time, what we're going to do here is just buy something that is worth quite a bit. So I bought that helmet, as you can see, 865 gold removed. Now actually, with this time, now when we go back to the chest, not only are we going to be able to get our gold back, but we're also going to be able to get all of the gold that the blacksmith had from us resetting his inventory. So as you can see there, instead of just being 865 gold, it was actually 1,900, which is a 1,100 gold profit each time you do reset his inventory like this. Now if you're wondering how to actually get out of this situation, what you want to do is just go under the chest there, and you can see the rocks kind of hanging off that wall on the right. So what you want to do is just come up here behind the targets, then you can just jump through, and, you know, as you can see here, we're actually still able to interact with our environment. It's not messed up the game in any way. And look, you can hold that plate. Or you can go and talk to somebody. Uh, let's go inside of here. So as you can see there, you can still interact with everyone as normal. It's almost as if nothing ever happened. And you can do this infinitely. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are actually three separate methods of getting out of the map. So, for the second one, what you're going to want to do is go to the middle of Whiterun there, past the tree. And as you can see, there's this house with this kind of like orange and red colour to it. Um, so, I'll just show it off from another angle here. So, as you can see, it's right there. And what you actually want to do is walk up to that plant and there's actually a glitch that has been in the game for a very very long time where if you stand still here you can actually just fall through the map and for that reason this is the easiest method of getting under the map now once you're under the map you're going to be able to interact with people still you know it's just like with a blacksmith but what you're going to want to do is where there's that curve there where it dips down in the ground you want to just head over to there now make sure you do go here as well because otherwise there's a decent chance that you'll get stuck in the floor and you may actually need to reset your game now you do just want to head south from here make sure you do not fall down in that hole because i'm sure you'll spend a long time jumping back up the sides of the walls to get back out now from here it is exactly the same as where we jumped the first time as you can see there that is where we jumped out of and you do just want to walk all the way back around and you can redo the glitch. Now for the third and final method you're actually going to want to come to Dragon Reach. Um, now the glitch itself doesn't take place here however we do need an item from here in order to be able to do this glitch. Now this glitch is, in my opinion, the most difficult of the bunch. And as you're actually going to see, I'm going to need to speed up the footage of me doing the glitch. Because it just does take me so long. Now what you want to do is go over to this table. Do not take the plate, but actually go and take a platter. And as you can see there, you can take it. It 
doesn't count as stealing. You're not going to be hung, drawn, and quartered for taking this platter. Now, what you want to do is actually head back out of Dragon's Reach and go over to where the companions are. Now, once you've made your way over here, as you can see, there's some targets. And we're going to want to get our platter out right around here. And you're actually just going to want to hold it up in the air, which is just holding the interact button. And as you can see there, the platter actually just disappeared into thin air. So it's a good thing that we actually had two. But yeah, you want to go between that target and the wall and hold your platter up against the wall. And you're just going to want to walk into it over and over and over again. Um, I'm going to speed this up because it did take me a little while. However, eventually, and I'm not even sure myself how I did it, um, we did make it through. So yeah, as you can see there, I did eventually make it through. And I'd say the one benefit of this method is it puts you much closer to Skyforge once you're actually out of Wyrun. However, simply because of how difficult this method actually is, I would really recommend against it. And I'd probably just do one of the first two methods. And to be honest, the time that you save from not walking as far is probably just going to be wasted on trying to actually make it through the wall in the first place. So yeah, as you can see here, back under the Skyforge and obviously you can do the steps that I showed before. Anyway, that is going to be all for the video. As I did say at the start, please do like if you liked the video or found it useful at all. And please do comment with any Skyrim videos you would like me to cover. I do enjoy making these videos, so I do hope that you guys enjoy watching them. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching.